Welcome to the Unconditionally Worthy Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Adia Gooden, a licensed clinical psychologist who believes deeply that you are worthy unconditionally. Hello, and welcome to episode 31 of the Unconditionally Worthy Podcast. As always, I am grateful to you for taking time out of your day to listen. Um, I'm recording this in November, and I realize that there are less than 50 days left to the year, to 2021. And it really feels like, it both feels like 21 has like flown by, and the beginning of 2021 feels like ages and ages and ages ago. And when you're listening to this episode, it's going to air in um, mid-December, there's going to be less than a month to 2021. And it just feels a little bit hard to wrap my mind around the fact that this year um, is almost over. So I hope that you're enjoying the last days, weeks of 2021. So You know, our episode today is about importance of having intention when you're on your self worth journey. And, you know, I think that a lot of people, I certainly did, sort of wandered around, not really being sure of what I needed to do and where I was going in terms of looking towards embracing my unconditional self worth. And so I'm going to share with you what that journey was like for me. And, you know, also talk about why it's important to have some clear intention, some guidance, some structure on this journey and not to just leave it to chance. So it was a rainy Tuesday morning and I woke up feeling stressed and anxious about the day ahead and all the things I had to, I had put on my to-do list for that day and that week. I got myself out of bed and ready to head to school for classes, lab work, and clinical work for the day. And when I walked outside of my apartment, the rain was pouring down. And all I saw, or all I thought I saw, were worms covering the ground. Now, for whatever reason, in Chicago, when it rains, worms come up from the dirt and spill out into the sidewalk. And I'm guessing that's because if they stayed underground, they would drown. A fun fact about me is that I do not like worms at all. I don't want to touch them. I don't want to see them. They gross me out. And, you know, in fact, this is, this has been true for me since I was a kid. My dad loves gardening and I did it a little bit with him, but I think the biggest thing that kept me from getting into gardening with him was because I was worried that I might run into a worm. So anyway, back to the story. I walk outside. I see the ground is covered with worms. I panic. My heart starts racing. My palms start shredding. My breath gets shallow and short. And I'm sort of freaking out, right? I have a moment of thinking, I don't know if I can go to school. (laughs) I don't think I can make it to my car. I don't know if I could go to school. Like this is just, I can't do this, right? So I finally sort of like push myself to run to my car as fast as I can hoping that if my feet touch the ground as little as possible, then maybe I would be less likely to come into contact with a worm. So I get to my car, get in my car, pause to catch my breath. I'm breathing very heavy. I ran very fast or as fast as I could. And, you know, the situation really prompted me to think about what was really going on with me. And it was in that moment that I realized I needed help, right? Having a panic attack over worms on the ground um, was a sign that I was stressed and overwhelmed. And while I do have a slight phobia of worms, uh, the real issue at play was the fact that I had been pushing and overworking myself for the first two years of graduate school, and I had reached a breaking point. When I started graduate school, I decided within the first few weeks, along with a fellow classmate of mine, that I wanted to graduate with my PhD in five years. And while this timeline was possible and one of my classmates did accomplish it, it was pretty accelerated and not necessary, right? It wasn't necessary for me, who went straight through from undergrad to graduate school, to graduate with a PhD in five years. Looking back, 
I can see that this goal was just another attempt by me to use achievement to prove my worth. It wasn't enough that I had graduated from Stanford and went straight into a PhD program. Now I was trying to prove my worth by showing that I could graduate with my PhD in five years, right? And that somehow that made me more worthy, more intelligent, more whatever. But the problem was that the accelerated pace I was trying to move at was unsustainable. And it caused me a lot of stress and anxiety, hence the panic attack over worms that one morning. So, you know, I'm really thankful to my younger self. I think I was probably 24 or 25 at this point, which means it was like uh, nine, well, yeah, like 10, no, 10 or 11 years ago, uh, probably 11 years ago. So I'm thankful to my younger self for knowing that I needed to go to therapy, right? You know, part of me justified it because I was like, you know, I'm in training to become a therapist and I really should go to therapy as part of my own development so I could experience it. It was very sort of intellectual, rationalized reason to go to therapy. And back then, you know, of course I was in training to become a therapist, right? So I believed in the power of therapy to a certain extent. And I was mostly working with children at that point, children and adolescents. And, you know, we, this was before where we are now, where therapy is fairly widely accepted, embraced, promoted, supported, right? That was not the conversation at the time. And so, you know, I certainly was helped by the fact that both of my parents are therapists, that I was in training to be therapists. And so it didn't feel like a totally foreign world, but I still had some apprehension about really going into therapy and, you know, letting it all hang out, right? And really talking about the deep issues that I had. And so for the first few months of therapy, I really didn't address any real concerns. I skimmed the surface. I I was probably not consciously, but it was important for me to seem like I had it together, even to my therapist, right? And so we didn't, it took a while for us to get into deeper issues. And thankfully, my therapist was patient with me, gave me the space and time I needed to really open up and get into some deeper issues that I needed to work on. And, you know, that therapeutic relationship was incredibly helpful. I was in therapy for about four years. And through therapy, I was able to understand some of the challenges I was experiencing In my relationships with my parents, it helped me to release longstanding perfectionism. I used the space to process and and let's be honest, vent about my dating challenges and struggles. And so therapy was great. And I still think therapy is great. Um, And while it got me on the path to connecting to my self-worth, it didn't give me a clear direction. So I didn't know exactly what I was looking for, exactly what I needed to do. I also didn't totally understand or maybe understand at all the core problem that I was having, right? That, that, the, that the underlying issue that I was struggling with was a self-worth issue. So therapy was helpful, but it wasn't sufficient for me to really get to a place of embracing my unconditional self-worth. In addition to therapy, at some point, I started reading books and listening to talks by spiritual teachers like Eckhart Tolle, Marianne Williamson, and Pema Chodron. And these teachings helped me to understand that we are more than what we do. And there's something bigger and deeper in each of us that we can connect to. And that there's sort of core parts of ourselves that are worthy, that are good enough. Um, without striving and achieving. And so it was a combination of therapy and what I was learning from these spiritual teachers. I'm practicing mindfulness, practicing self-kindness that I was preaching to my clients, but hadn't always practiced with myself that really helped me to get closer to embracing my unconditional self-worth. I would say overall, this journey took me about um, eight to probably around eight years, you know, I was making progress towards being kinder to myself and owning my worth 
more and more as I went along. And the journey took me so much longer than it needed to, because I didn't have specific guidance and practices around like what I needed to do to really make a fundamental shift. And it wasn't until later that I fully understood that embracing my unconditional self-worth was going to be the solution to the many challenges I had been experiencing. So part of the reason I'm so passionate about helping you engage in your own self-worth journey in an efficient and effective way is because I know what it's like to spend years struggling to find the true answer to my many struggles. I can see now that my anxiety, feelings of burnout, tendency to overwork, my dating stress and anxiety, my tendency to settle for relationships where I wasn't valued or appreciated, my feelings of loneliness, my tendency to struggle financially, all stemmed from self-worth issues. But since I didn't know it at the time, I tried to tackle each issue separately, right? Or I felt like there wasn't really much I could do about it. I felt like life was happening to me. I didn't realize that I had as much agency over my life and over directing my life to look the way I wanted it to look, to attract the things I wanted in my life as as I do and as I believe we all do. So I'm sharing my own self-worth journey to illustrate what can happen if you are not intentional on your self-worth journey, right? I think mine is a story of certainly getting to a place where I fully embrace my unconditional self-worth. And it took me a lot of trial and error. It took me a long time. It took me years and years. And I don't think it needs to take you that long. And I think the main reason that it took me so long is because I didn't have clear guidance because I didn't know what I was searching for. I didn't know how to get there. It was like I was roaming around in the wilderness, not even, not knowing what the destination was or what direction I was supposed to be going in. I sort of felt my way through, ended up in some clearings, met some people along the way that guided me along part of the path. And I just want to encourage you to think about doing it differently than I did. And that's part of the reason I have this podcast and why I provide resources, because I want you to take this journey intentionally, right? It it will be much more efficient. It will take much less time. You will, you know, spend less time struggling with emotional pain and baggage. You will spend less time feeling like you're not worthy, you will, you won't miss out on opportunities because you don't feel like you're good enough. You will spend less time feeling like you can't live life to the fullest, right? So going on this journey with intention, investing some time and energy, and maybe even money in the journey is going to make a difference in your life. And I encourage you to do it. I think very often we live in a way where we just get by until there's a big issue that happens, right? So we often do this with our health. It's like, eh, health is not great. We just get by until we get a big diagnosis from our doctor that says, hey, if you don't change this, if you don't, if you don't start exercising, if you don't change your eating habits, whatever, you're going to be in big trouble. You're going to need a major procedure, right? Or maybe you already are there and then you have to sort of go back and clean things up later. And I think the same can be true for our wellness, our mental wellness and emotional and personal growth journeys, except for it often takes a while. And sometimes even when people reach a point where it's like, I've got to do something different, they don't know what the, what different it is. And so my encouragement to you is not to wait until some awful thing happens, not to wait until you have a breakdown, not to wait until a relationship falls apart. But to think about how you can engage in your self-worth journey with intention now to use the resources that are available to you so that you don't have to waste any more of your time not feel living life not feeling worthy. I want you to experience all of the incredible things that life has to offer when you know you're unconditionally worthy. Right. I, I want you to experience that. It is incredible. The, the last episode that you'll hear in this se- second season 
of the podcast is me talking about all of the incredible things that I have experienced as a result of embracing my unconditional self-worth. And I'm going to share that with you as a way to inspire you, right? As a way to inspire you to see what life can be like and the fact that it is attainable. So I do want to make a quick note about therapy um, because I've mentioned it before in this episode. And I want to talk about why therapy is not always enough to get you to a place of embracing your unconditional self-worth. So I'm going to start by saying I'm a licensed therapist. I believe in the power of therapy to transform lives. So I'm not, this is not intended to bash therapy or say that it is unhelpful or ineffective. But what I do want to say is that just as I was not trained in my clinical training to look for issues of low self-worth and to use therapy to directly address low self-worth and conditional self-worth, to directly help people embrace their unconditional self-worth, most therapists are not trained in this either, right? Which means that therapists can very much help you in a lot of mental health, coping with mental health concerns, understanding, making sense of your life, but they may or may not understand clearly how to support you in embracing your unconditional self-worth. Also, most therapy is responsive to the issues and concerns that you bring into therapy to discuss. And so it's very easy for therapy to end up focusing on whatever issues or challenges you have that week, you're having that week, or that are coming up for you, while also addressing underlying patterns. But most therapy is not structured to intensely, intentionally focus on helping you embrace your unconditional self-worth. So I have a former course member who had been in therapy for a while and had been doing great work with her therapist. And she took my Unconditionally Worthy course and found it incredibly helpful and transformative. And she told me afterwards that her therapist asked her for the information about the course because she saw how much transformation this, my former course member, her client, experience in the course, right? So this is in addition to doing therapy, this course provided the structure, the guidance, the support to really help my client take her self-worth journey to the next level, right? And so I just point that out to say that, you know, saying I'm in therapy may or may not be enough. Therapy is great, but that may not be the thing that really gets you to a a place of fully embracing your unconditional self-worth. So you'll actually get to hear from this former course member um, in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. So, you know, my point here is, you know, to think about what is it, what might it look like, right, for you to intentionally go on a self-worth journey. And that might include therapy. It might include some other things. But knowing that you need to be intentional if you want this journey to take less time. And there's good reason to want it to take less time because life is so good when you embrace your unconditional self-worth and you don't want to spend more time not believing that about yourself. So in order to avoid roaming around in the wilderness of your self-worth journey, like I did for years, it's important to have some sort of structure and clear guidance around the stops that you need to take on the journey and the direction you should be going in. Yes, everyone's journeys to embracing their unconditional self-worth will be unique because we have different life experiences that have brought us to where we are now. And there are practices and ways of being with ourselves and ways of making sense of our experiences that can help everyone on their self-worth journeys. The structure and support that I provide as part of the Unconditionally Worthy program gives you just that. So, This program includes seven modules of course content that will help you connect to the true source of your worth, practice self-compassion, self-forgiveness, connect to your intuition, cultivate authentic relationships, right? This content is incredibly rich and it's structured and it's based on my personal journey. It's based on years of doing therapy with people. It's based on what I know helps people make changes in their life. It's incredibly rich and it is structured. And so I know that this structure really helps people 
shift in their lives and make an incredible amount of progress on their self-worth journeys. And not only do you get structured guidance on the most important things to do and to practice on the self-worth journey, you also get support, right? So I mentioned in a previous episode that the Unconditionally Worthy program is now a small group coaching program. And this enables me to provide you with live coaching, to answer your questions, to help you get moved through stuck places and challenges. And it really is a magical space to connect, to be seen, to be heard, and to be supported on this journey, which makes so much difference. So if you're wanting to take your self-worth journey to the next level in the new year, I encourage you not to take the long, difficult way when you're not sure of where it'll lead. I encourage you not to do it haphazardly without guidance. I encourage you to seriously consider investing your time, energy, and yes, money into a program that provides you with the support you need every step of the way. This will get you to a place where you embrace your unconditional self-worth faster and where you get to spend more of your life living the joy, freedom, and peace, knowing that you're unconditionally worthy. And let me tell you, living life, knowing you're worthy is incredible. In a couple of episodes, I'll, as I mentioned, I'll be sharing more about what life can look like when you know you're unconditionally worthy. So if you're interested in learning more about the Unconditionally Worthy program, you can visit www.unconditionallyworthy.com forward slash program. You'll be able to see the details of the program. And if you think it's right for you, you can submit an inquiry and then we'll set up a call and a time to talk about your interest in joining the program and really making sure that it's right for you. I am limiting the spaces in the program to 20 people, so I can provide as much support to everyone who participates as possible. And so if you're interested and you're serious, I would love to have you. So please check out the program information. It's linked in the show notes. Again, it's unconditionallyworthy.com forward slash program. And I'd love for you to, you know, submit um, an inquiry and have a call with me because it's going to be powerful. It's going to be an incredible way to start off 2022. As always, thank you so much for listening. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your feedback. So please leave a rating and review. And I hope you are well and enjoy yourself until next week. 